Hey, your robo taxi has arrived. On December the 1st, 2021, the first batch of commercialized robo taxi drove out onto the streets in Beijing. This is yet another milestone event that defines the rapid development of automobility in China. In the past five years, RoboTaxi has become a flagship AI applications in this country, empowered by billions of funding. According to public records, the first two months of 2021 already saw 26 billion US dollars invested in this domain. There are four types of RoboTaxi players in China, traditional automakers, technology conglomerates, ride-hailing companies, and AB Pure Play. There are so far 20 testing grounds for automobility in China, with most of them in Beijing, Shanghai, and Guangdong. Regional governments are welcoming players with open arms as they all want to breed their local champions in the segment of mobility as a service. Legislation is also catching up quickly. What I found interesting is that the high-level legislation involvement comes only from Ministry of Public Security, Ministry of Industry and Information Technology, and the Shenzhen Municipal Government. Just think about who gets involved and who did not. The biggest robo-taxi friendly area in Shanghai is Jiading. This is a suburban district way out of city center. As a local, I rarely come to this part of the city but it is a district of 465 square kilometers and 1.8 million people. To put these numbers in perspective, it has a population slightly larger than Phoenix, the state capital of Arizona, and a size similar to Warsaw, the capital of Poland. There are 100 pickup and drop-off spots in Jiading for robo-taxis, which are only allowed to drive within this geofenced area. Some leaders such as Baidu or Pony AI have rolled out a dedicated robo-taxi hailing app. Getting a ride is similar to how you get an Uber, Lyft, or Didi. My ride was pre-arranged by the company, but I arrived early so to try out cars from its competitors. I tried to hail robo-taxi on my own through multiple apps, but the shortest waiting time was 10 minutes. But what do I have to complain about? I'm here specifically for that, and the ride was free. I already tried a robo taxi last year. We drove out around 2 p.m. on a workday, also with a safety operator behind the wheel, but doing little as he can. As you can imagine, traffic was light, road was empty, not much excitement to be anticipated. Whereas this round, the flea departed around 6 p.m. on a workday. Jiading is no downtown Shanghai, admittedly, but this typical peak hour means the vehicle will have quite some traffic to deal with. Overall, our ride was smooth. For some complicated road conditions with pedestrians and scooters moving either close to or quickly passing by the car, and knows how to react correspondingly to have no one killed. Whether to stop, go, make a turn, or make a U-turn, the robo-taxi seems astute and skillful. And I couldn't help but keep checking if the guy behind the wheel is really just watching and monitoring. This high-definition traffic map is a result of pre-made and real-time painting. The surroundings of the moving car will be accurately recorded by multiple sensors mounted on the vehicle. Note that it does not only reflect what's ahead or on the side, it also keeps a studious record of what's in the rear of the car. If you are an experienced driver, it is not hard to tell that sensors are able to pick up way more than what our eyes are able to see. Even a car hundreds of meters out on the other side of the street, with multiple objects in between, can also be immediately detected by sensors and duly reflected on the map. The only two outstanding scenarios during our ride I took notice of had nothing to do with safety. One is that the driver in front of us pulled off at an illegal spot. The robo-taxi wasn't able to tell it was a parking situation and waited there for rather long. The safety operator had to intervene and instruct the car to move away. As the next lane became rather busy because the one we were in was blocked, the robo-taxi, programmed to be extra polite and cautious, tried for at least two minutes to switch the lane. I don't think any human driver would have waited that long, 
because there were multiple good opportunities during the wait. Regardless, the robo taxi refused to budge. The other is when we were about to reach the destination. There were office workers going home, passing by the robo taxi one after another. The car struggled hard before falling into a coma, as it completely lost track of the situation. To take a closer look at the technologies embedded, I went to Pony AI's website to find out the types of hardware they have adopted. For every autonomous vehicle, there are three lidars, four radars, and four cameras equipped. They act as the eyes of the vehicle to keep track of the surrounding objects based on their shape, distance, and speed. All information will be sent to the AI-powered computing system, which I would call the brain of the vehicle, to decide the contour of the surroundings, the distance, and come up with a live map. The brain then decides the next step based on algorithm trained and implanted, and send the order back to the vehicle, which will then execute. All the above steps happen within milliseconds. Assuming they will act in normal as designed, the car will be moving safely on the street. Safety is of paramount importance when it comes to autonomous driving, especially after multiple reports of deadly accidents triggered by vehicles put on self-driving mode. I talked with multiple insiders from the automobile industry to understand the maturity and readiness of this technology. They sounded nothing but confident, and explained that those fatality reports were just a result of false marketing. The current technologies in the market you see from major brands are only of assisting purpose. Relying on it to drive in your stead is nothing but a false mistake. According to a recent polling result published by Bit Auto, close to 93% of Chinese. Do not trust autonomous driving, thinking it is too dangerous. I asked the safety operator to see which adventurous cohort is the majority of the riders. Not surprisingly, most passengers are tech-savvy young generation who have developed unconditional trust in the mighty technologies. Some older people can occasionally be seen, according to the operator, but they're very open-minded individuals without jitter. I told my 60-year-old mom about this new offering in Jiading, and she thinks it's worth a day trip. If we look at the way technologies direct the car and compare that to the key factors that define a safe ride if a human driver is in charge, I see some aspects that may fail to be delivered by technologies. But if we only talk about object detection, speed control, or traffic rule compliance. Technology can deliver perfect performance on those fronts, and many times even outperform human. However, what adds to the complication is the fact that roads are shared by other cars, scooters, drivers, and pedestrians who make decisions in potentially unpredictable ways. Technology may not be as perceptional as human in interpreting on-site dynamics. Machines cannot read human minds; they only execute. But here's also a dichotomy: in a hybrid mode, with human and machine both acting and making their decisions on the street, we need uber smart technologies to be able to move along the human behavior line for now. Whereas, if we move fast forward to 50 years later, when everyone gets tired of driving, and it's a machine taking over the tedious tasks. The tech curve will drop steeply, as the unreliable human being will be out of the decision-making picture. Assuming we're fortunate enough to avoid technical glitches, this is some safe and powerful driving force we can all expect.